Well, good morning. Today is Sunday, November the 22nd. It is the Sunday before America's traditional celebration of Thanksgiving, and I hope that you're able to join us today, either online, but most importantly, join us in person if you live in the Tampa Bay area. Our Sunday School Hour will begin at 9.15. Pastor Barber's teaching the online uh, adult Bible fellowship class. And then at 10.30, we will begin our morning service. Uh, today's a special day. I'm going to begin a two-part message on the Lord's Prayer, found in Luke chapter 11. And I've asked our music pastor, uh, Steve Armstrong, to sing the Lord's Prayer this morning. So I hope that you'll be able to join us for our day of worship. Now, our scripture devotion for today is Galatians chapter 1, 2, and 3. And I've titled it, Troubles in Galatia. Now, our chronological reading of the scripture brings us to Paul's epistle to believers living in Galatia, which you and I would know today as modern Turkey. Galatia was lying, lies due north of what uh, was the island of Cyprus. It was a Roman province in the first century. And the Greeks referred to the people of the region as Gauls, uh, believed to have been Celtic by their ancestry, a Germanic tribe. In fact, many of us have our ancestry that goes back to the people of Galatia and the area known as uh, uh, Galea in the Latin word. Now, the cities in that area were Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. Now, uh, I don't have time to do anything more than just a brief introduction of the epistle or the, the book or the letter to Galatia, and allow me to do that. Now, the content of the letter will reveal, as you study it today, Genesis 1, uh, Galatians 1, 2, and 3, will reveal that there were false teachers that had infiltrated the churches in Galatia, and they were calling into question and challenging Paul's credibility and authority as an apostle, and they were, many of them by Pharisees in their background, were undermining the doctrine of grace that we know is central to the gospel. Paul had two objectives in writing this epistle. The first was a defense of his apostleship, and the second a defense and declaration of the gospel of grace in Jesus Christ. Now, in, the, in his defense of his apostleship, uh, Paul leaves no doubt what this letter was going to be about. And right from the first verse, he introduces himself as an apostle, not of men, neither by man. That is, his authority as an apostle was not received from a council of men, nor an ecclesiastical authority. Paul proclaimed that his commission as an apostle was from God, and he writes in Galatians 1 and verse 1, it was from God by Jesus Christ, God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Now we find in the scriptures that there were four qualifications of an apostle. The first qualification was this, that you uh, had to have been a witness of Christ in and after his resurrection. Paul fulfilled that one. The second is you had to have received your calling from Christ himself. Paul received that as well on the road to Damascus. The third qualification was that your teaching had to be divinely inspired. On many occasions, Paul sets forth the fact that he was given the word of the Lord. And then finally, you must evidence the power to perform miracles as a sign of apostleship. Paul fulfilled all all four of those. Now, there are men in our day who claim to be an apostle, but I can assure you they are misrepresenting what the apostle is, and I can assure you scripturally they are not the biblical definition of an apostle. Now, uh, finally, who are the recipients of this letter? Well, we know that they were the churches in Galatia, according to Galatians 1 and verse 2. The epistle is a general address to the believers of the churches of Galatia. It would have been read publicly and shared from one assembly of believers 
to another. Now, I've only introduced Paul's epistle to the Galatians today. However, it is good to note that only, uh, not only who is writing, Paul the Apostle, but also why he is writing. Most importantly, it is that we remember that Scripture is divinely inspired, literally, God-breathed. We read in 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I hope as you join us this morning for our 1030 service that you will hear plainly presented, Thus saith the, the Lord. I thank you for joining me today. Again, I'm hoping many of you will join us for our Thanksgiving Day worship services. God bless. Have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.